Hello and welcome back to the show. I have Angie the Sound Healer with me today and she's going to tell us about her work in helping people heal with sound. Angie, welcome to the show. Tell me all about what you do. I love this. Uh, thank you, Kelly, for inviting me. It's, it's amazing. Just from commenting on a video. <laughs> uh, that's part of what I love about this journey we're on all on at the moment is this synchro mystic, you know, like yes. joining of dots. And sound is part of that. Yes. Sound is part of that because it is. Um, sound just keeps going. It doesn't stop. Um, so... <sighs> I suppose from a very early age, um, I used to sing to myself because I wouldn't never sing out loud because I was told not to, so I never did. Um, and I suppose it, it started there because that was a kind of self-soothing and years, years, years later, I met the guy that I trained with, myself and my partner. We trained with a guy called Tim Wheater. He is the god of sound, as far as I'm concerned. He brought sound sound healing to the West uh, in the early 2000s. Awesome. And, uh, yeah, to train with him, it was like, because I knew when I saw him up on stage that first time, I'm like, that's it. That's what it is. <laughs> um, and it was it was amazing. Yeah. And I was so, I was so moved that I, and I was, you know, even though I'd done you know, lots of inner work, I was still very, I wouldn't approach people at all. I, you know, it wasn't something that I did. I actually got up and I went and I spoke to this bloke, <laughs> Tim Wheater, and, and the lady that he was uh, working with at the time. And I said, that was just amazing. And then when, when I trained with him on that first day, at the end of the day, I said, I've got to tell you a story. <laughs> And so that, that, you know, he, he really kind of solidified what that was that I knew as a child, um, that it, that, the, that. yeah, it was, it was amazing. Um, and the thing with singing, a lot of people don't realize why they feel good when they sing is because it's the out breath. So the out breath is where the relaxation mm -hmm. is. That's where that response comes in. So mm -hmm. when you sing, that's why you feel good when you sing, because you're, you're actually relaxing yourself. Mm -hmm. And of course, I didn't learn that until, yes. you know, until I did other training as a, as a yoga teacher. So, you know, I didn't, although I didn't know what I was doing as a child, I knew what to do. And it is, you know, it's yeah. quite amazing <laughs> that I can sit here now and say, yeah, I'm a sound healer. <laughs> Yeah, that's, Absolutely. that is amazing. And I find it also very amazing how innately, because I try to teach people that we have all of this knowledge in us naturally, just like with yeah. the sound, right? And you did this as a child. I know many people that as children, they hum or they sing, and it's a way of them to release and relax and, you know, be in that happy place again. Yeah. And we just do it so naturally and organically without the understanding of the wisdom behind it. And now you have that wisdom and that knowledge behind it yeah. to, to further influence other people. And I just, I love that. I love mm. that. Mm. So let me ask you, what exactly is involved in learning sound healing? How does one learn that? I don't, I don't think that, well, you said you don't need bits of paper. That's for sure. I've got one, but it's, it's, you know, it's just words on a bit of paper. It doesn't, I have learned probably more <laughs> since I trained <laughs> off my own back and actually doing it. Um, yeah. I think it's, it's, it's in the doing and it's in the, <laughs> the experimentation. Um, right. So it's more of an intuitive thing, right? You're you're listening to what's feeling right or like how is that what it is? You're feeling it out? 
Yeah, it, it depends on the tools you're using. So that there is, I mean, m- music theory to me just makes my head go. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but one thing I've learned is about perfect fifths. Yeah. Um, that's really easy. You just count the notes. It's easy. You don't have to know music theory to know perfect fifths. So I've been I've been using those a lot recently because that's coming, that's kind of come in front of my magical eyes. So it's like, okay, I need to use that. Um, so it's very, it's that synchromistic thing again. So if if a piece of knowledge kind of comes in front of me, I will look at it. I might learn a little bit about it, but then it's it's the doing of it um yeah if you're if i'm using tuning forks now that's a different thing altogether um so with tuning forks what's really interesting is you can a bit like star trek yeah because they use scanners in star trek tuning forks are a bit like that so you scan the body with them and you can hear if you your ear is tuned you can hear when the sound is slightly dull so that's where you know to to um focus your the tuning fork so it then recalibrates oh that's fascinating <laughs> it's like, and i i was quite skeptical about that's, that when i, when I learned it <laughs> yeah doing it, doing it is yeah actually yeah. hearing it is completely different to learning the theory around it yeah right right well the reason The reason that I ask you um, what that really involves is because, you know, I'm always trying to simplify these terms that we use so that people can understand and relate to them better. And, you know, people hear about sound healing baths and sound healing therapy, and it just sounds woo woo to them. So I want to bring it down to earth. And, mm. and give them an understanding from an everyday normal person perspective of why it works and, and why they should be open to using it, trying it, contacting people like you, you know. So um, if you don't mind and you have some words that can elaborate on that, I would love for you to give your wisdom on that. And then if we can put you on the spot, I would love to have a sample sound healing. Cool. So if you the the actual kind of physical effect of um, a specifically tuned um, instrument. So a gong or a singing bowl or a tuning fork, or even a drum. Um, the thing that it does, so sound will move through anything. Yeah. So it, it literally moves through your body. And it, it I want to say it takes no prisoners, but it, it doesn't, it's not worried about, you know, <laughs> how relaxed you are or are you stressed today? It just moves through your body. And it's that recalibration. So, so what it enables your body to do is just completely relax. So you can go from being in complete overwhelm to being completely relaxed in a matter of minutes. That's how powerful it is. It. And I've even heard someone say, <laughs> their, son, their son had a sound healing session with us, and she said, I've never seen his face look like that. It's like all the stress just melted from his face I'm like wow isn't that wonderful (laughs) it's amazing that's wonderful yeah that was a really that was a a really good explanation (laughs) how it just goes through anybody and it just doesn't even care it it has no there I mean it's neutral right it's completely neutral in that that it it has no concern about how you're feeling about it or your opinion of it. And that, I think that's a really um, beautiful thing because I have found in my methods of healing that sometimes dealing with clients, if their mind isn't open enough to what I'm doing, I can only help them so much. It's limited. Whereas sound healing, that's a whole new, that's a whole new world. 
Yeah, and, and all the person That's has beautiful. to do is lay down and go to sleep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. That's not too that hard to ask. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I'll do that. You lay down, you go to sleep, we play some stuff and you relax. Oh, all right. Okay. <laughs> cool. It's, that, it's easy yeah. and painless. Yeah. And it, and, beca- and I suppose it, it takes the, like you say, it takes the thinking out of it because yeah, you know, for anyone who's had any kind of like hands-on healing or anything like that, you know, your mind's going as as the person's doing the healing, and you're like, "Can, can I feel that? What, what's that?" And there's all this stuff going on. Yeah, sound healing. Yep. Most most people fall asleep, to be honest, when we're doing the the sound healing, because it's yeah. that deep relaxation that you you know you come to. Right. And see, just again, in contrast with the work that I do, if somebody fell asleep while I was working with them, I would feel awkward, (laughs) right? I would feel like I'm not doing my job. (laughs) But (laughs) in your case, that's a good thing. That's That's a good thing, yeah. (laughs) So so, uh, out of all of the different tools that you use, what is your personal favorite? Oh, blimey. Mm. if you had to choose <laughs> oh it's really hard because I love gongs I love gongs but uh, I suppose it's got to be the crystal yeah, singing bowls. I do too they're just the thing but I love and they and the crystal has a whole different pitch from like the brass or other bowls right oh yeah it's it's a yeah. whole different frequency yes um yeah. I think the it's Tibetan bowls are more kind of earth based, that makes sense. Um, and the crystal yeah. bowls, they're, they're definitely connected to the higher aspects of ourself. We, uh, that's probably the only way I can describe it. So they yes. both serve different purposes. I think that's great. And of course, the metal ones, the, the Tibetan ones, you put on the body or you can put them on your head. You know, you can't really do that with the crystal ones, they're a bit heavy. <laughs> Um, right right so they they do serve different purposes but yeah my personal favorite is i suppose if i had to choose it would be my third eye crystal singing bowl (laughs) all right all right well i didn't mean to put you on the spot and make you have to choose just one but i was just (laughs) you know curious which ones which ones you really like the best and i personally love gongs too I mean, like, I, I like all of the different methods. I like the tuning forks. I like bowls, you know, but something about that gong. Milo, be quiet, please. Something about that gong just, like, reaches my soul on such a primitive, yeah, deep level. Does that make sense to you? Oh, yeah. Can you explain that to me? Uh, when, when I'm playing the gongs, I must look a bit weird, actually, because <laughs> um, I get right up in their face and I play it and it's almost like it's um, I have a conversation with it. <laughs> I do. I'm standing like this far What's away the from the gong while I'm playing it. It's just. And the sounds, you know, just by using different different patterns and flumies and whatever you know it's like the sounds you can get out of a gong phenomenal yeah i think so too yeah and you can so, sing with them would you like to play a sample can you really um, yeah i can i can grab my bowl i'll have to play the microphone <laughs> Okay. Move all my crap out of the way. All right, bear with me. (laughs) 
I didn't mean to put you on the spot, but I would really love to hear a little sample. Oh my gosh, that's a big bowl. <laughs> that's a little one. That's a little one. <laughs> that's a little one? Oh, oh my land. Got a 12 inch bowl sitting over there. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, oh, that is awesome. That shakes the floor. <laughs> Okay. Oh my gosh, that would be such a cool feeling. Okay. Oh, it's amazing because you know I, 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 you know, I post some of this stuff up on YouTube. Can you hear that? Excuse the motorbike. <laughs> Can you hear that? No, maybe the mic's not going to pick it up. Oh, I'm still not hearing it. <laughs> okay. Still do it that way. You hear that? Might need to. No. Um, and, uh, you know, a friend of mine has tuning forks, and we had trouble getting the tuning forks to pick up on the microphone one time, too. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's such a high pitch frequency, it's hard to pick up sometimes. Uh, let me change in the microphone. Can you hear that? Oh, I I am starting to hear it now. Yes, I changed the microphone. So, Yeah, on my end, I'm only getting glimpses of the sound, unfortunately. Wow. Maybe it'll pick up better for the recording itself. Yeah. That's a bummer. Where's the gong? <laughs> I can go in, I can go and do a gong. <laughs> <laughs> well, the other day when I was, I was trying to live stream, I was trying to live stream some gong stuff, and it kept, it was uh, they were too powerful for my uh, for my very good microphones, and they, they kept cutting out. <laughs> yeah, that's what that's what it was doing was kind of cutting it out with the crystal bowl, and yeah, yeah, I think that's what it is. The frequencies are just so high that it's really very hard to pick that up on a microphone, but that's okay. Yeah. That's okay. We gave it a try. We did. <laughs> yeah. Now you can scoot your microphone back over toward you and get your nice big cup of tea or whatever you're drinking. Uh, <laughs> Enjoy tea. that again. <laughs> <laughs> green tea. I love green tea. Yeah, my partner makes it. You can stand a spoon up in it. <laughs> Oh. Very strong. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Well, that's good for you. Okay, so how do you go about doing 
sound healing with people? Do you um, advertise? Do, do they just know about you and they come to you? Is it friends and family? How does this work? Um, it's a bit of both, actually. We don't, we don't really advertise apart from on, you know, Google. Um, we use Google My Business. Um, a lot of it comes through word of mouth, uh, which is really cool. Um, but we do get, you know, like little dribs and drabs through Google searches. Um, in fact, we've got someone coming tomorrow who was actually looking for crystals <laughs> and went, oh, my God, you do sound healing. <laughs> She'd been traveling up to London every time she wanted sound healing, which is uh, quite a trek. Um, so she yeah. was like, we're just down the road from her. <laughs> um, Wonderful. I mean, we've we've got a, I've redone our website um so that's uh the one that's up there at the moment is just sound healing but we do other stuff as well um so yeah it's it's kind of a little bit of both people um come to us word of mouth or sometimes sometimes they it was through google okay <laughs> can you see my daughter crawling down the hallway in the background <laughs> trying to keep out of the camera <laughs> <laughs> oh, <dear. laughs> that's funny they they do pretty good at trying to stay out of the camera frame um so yeah i want to be sure to put your uh website and your contact information in the description link right. below the video so that anybody that's in your area can contact you for your wonderful sound healing and i would love to work with you further but i don't know how that's going to play out yet we're going to just have to play that by ear absolutely yeah definitely <laughs> but, um, yeah. i, I it unfold but i yes that's right but i'm a firm believer that when we have that kind of a connection that there's a reason for it you know there there's a reason there's something there to explore and so um yeah that's why I was so quick to say, let's, let's do a show together because there's something there, right? Yeah. And um, yeah. that's my job to, to get us all connected and moving and grooving and, and doing all these beautiful new things that are helping to create this new world that we're embarking upon, right? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. And we're, you know, and then a lot of people, I don't know, there, there's so much fear around that at the moment. And it, I don't understand how people can't understand that they're creating it. <laughs> this isn't, you know, I don't know how you would say that, you know, the, the people in charge. No, they're not in charge. Stop it. <laughs> we, no. are, we are creating it. It's, it's nothing to do with them. They're That's just, right. I don't even know what you'd call them. Yeah. I don't they don't well, have a name. I'm yeah, I think we kind of, uh, we forgot that we're in charge. And so the people that still knew they could do something kind of capitalized on that oh, and yeah. ran with it. And now we're, now we're in this beautiful awakening of awareness of who we are and people are taking charge again. And so we're taking the power back from them and creating the world that we want. And I think it's freaking amazing. It's so exciting so exciting yeah yeah <laughs> a little bit a little bit uh yeah we, we we tend to laugh a lot of the weird narratives that are kind of playing out all over the place at the moment <laughs> yeah yeah um, yeah because um, it is kind of like a movie right <laughs> yeah we are definitely watching ourselves uh, watching a screen definitely <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's like a it, it's an in your face lesson of how you can look at things from the higher perspective of your higher self and watch how all this plays out. You know, uh, similar to near death experiences, actually, where people literally step outside their body and they can see all of the event playing, except mm -hmm. we don't have to die <laughs> or be close to death. 
to to experience this in this time. Yeah. And it, it's fascinating. It's phenomenal. Uh, it's mind blowing. It's exciting. There's lots of adjectives that I could use for it. But I mean, Confucius, Confucius got it right when he said, may you live in interesting times because we're there, baby. <laughs> we're there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it's definitely interesting. <laughs> and I think it's, it's... So what, what else? Oh, go ahead. No, it's okay. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, it's, it's, if the last three years has taught us anything, it's... You know that life is so much more interesting actually when you step away from all that stuff. <laughs> um, That's right, because it was just noise. It was just noise to keep us busy, right? Keep us distracted. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And it, it's funny because even yeah. I don't know five years ago, maybe six, seven years ago. You know, I'd have thought that, you know, what, what I'm doing now is actually a bit boring because <laughs> about that time ago, that's when, stopped, that's when I stopped drinking. So it's like, well, you know, oh, so not drinking, that's a bit boring. <laughs> I mean, in fact, no, it's more interesting. <laughs> and I think, that's what, right. I think that's what a lot of people are scared of because they, they, they're they scared of feeling bored I think that's part of what that is why they keep looking at that stuff all the time um yeah it's, so it's what the would be your advice it? on that oh. <laughs> go and do some yoga <laughs> I'm on go and do, go and do some do yoga into nature <laughs> Get into nature. Walk yeah. until you can't walk anymore. <laughs> um, I like put it. Your, put your phone down. <laughs> Definitely. That is just like it's constant. Yeah. I oh. know. Oh, it drives me drives me absolutely batty to go mm. to a restaurant or any kind of public place. And you see these people, they're all there together. They're clearly family or, you know, related in some way. But nobody's yeah. looking at each other. Nobody's yeah. talking to each other. They're all doing this on their phone. And I, it just drives me crazy. I'm like, put your phones down. You have yeah. people in front of you. Be present in the moment. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And we saw, this was a couple of years ago, um, and we were out in a, a pub garden having our, I think we'd done a long walk and we were having our chips and our um, lime and soda. And there's a couple, young couple with a young baby in a pram and they're both sitting there doing that. It's like, I don't even, I can't even comprehend what would make you do that <laughs> and completely ignore your baby. It's weird. Yeah. Yeah. I don't understand it either. Mm. I don't know. I mean, I have, I have seven kids and when my kids were babies, I could not get enough of them. I mean, I would just like stare at them obsessively and watch <laughs> every little thing that they do, you know, yeah. just, I was just so enthralled by them. So I just, I don't, but I'm from a different generation. So I, <laughs> you I, know, think, it's, I think, I think that's it's different where... for us. Yeah, I think that's where we have an advantage because we were here before technology, you know, that that technology, you know, the phones and even telly. You know, we didn't have a telly when I was a child. Yeah. Um, right. Yeah, you know, all that right. stuff, laptops, internet, you know, none of that. We had none of that. Mm -hmm. And I think we're lucky yeah. because we know what life actually is. You know, so, some of these... Yes. Some of these kids now, they don't know life without those things. And I think that's a little bit sad, actually, because yeah, there's more, <laughs> so much more. There's so much more. Mm. Yeah, so much more. And the, and the sad thing about it is that, you know, the, the generation with those children that would be their parents, they were kind of the, the kids that had one foot in both worlds, right? They were the, they were the interception of, or the, or the inter, 
combining, intertwining, however you say that, of this new age technology world and that old style living, you know, that was falling away. Yeah. And um, I and and I feel like, and you know, a lot of times they get they get classed as like the the snowflakes or whatever. Um, but I think a lot of snowflakes are actually waking up <laughs> at this time. Oh, wow. um, several <laughs> of my clients, several of my clients recently are in their late twenties, early thirties, and that's huge for me. That's that's really huge that that demographic is waking up now um, because we need them. You know, we we're let's face it, we're going to get old quicker than they are. And <laughs> our knowledge and our views are going to fall away, right? So we need them. They are a very important, intricate part of our future and the future that we hope to uh, build for this world. So I'm really glad to see a lot of them waking up now, finally. Um, but yeah, like like I said, I have seven kids, and my kids, you know, even though they have technologies and they have some nice things, you know, quote unquote, nice things. Yeah. Um, they have limitation to it and rules, right? Like you can only be on the computer for an hour in one day. And, you know, you, you have to have outside time. You have to have like my kids play with Hot Wheels still and Slinkies and Toto, <laughs> and, you know, go outside and dig for worms. I mean, like, <laughs> right. We're still, we're still going to be doing those things so that yeah. they can learn what it's like to really be a kid you know get dirty because yeah. getting dirty is a great thing to do <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> so um what else are you interested in or what do you do in your pastime when you're not healing people with sound uh, it was, it's kind of um because we do these you know we we, we <laughs> It's like, um, how can I say that? We we live, we we have a particular lifestyle, and we share that with people who are interested. Um, so sound healing is part of. It's not just something we do for other people. We use it every day for ourselves, uh, whether that's through yoga, mantra, playing some kind of instrument, or singing. <laughs> at the top of my voice <laughs> with the dog <laughs> um so it's kind of a, everything everything that we do everything that we um are interested in I don't know if that's yeah uh, everything we do is part of our whole lifestyle so it's it's a bit like when when we were yoga teachers um it wasn't the the weird gym yoga that you know everyone went crazy about for a little while um it was it was more of like uh, the whole thing um so what we were trying i suppose what we were trying to do back then is you know show people what you know living a yogic lifestyle was actually like rather than just going to a class once a week <laughs> Uh, and it's the same way. Wonderful, with the I love healing. that. Yeah, um, and it, it's it's funny because when I, I suppose in my early twenties, I kind of wanted to live that kind of a life, but I had no idea because I was working a crappy job, you know, living in shared accommodation with people who weren't always great. Um, <laughs> and it's like, oh, I don't know how that's going to happen. Yeah. And it just happened. Um, so, you know, other stuff that we're interested in, um, we love walking, hiking, camping, um, uh, don't know if I can say this, <laughs> we're, uh, occultists, witches, um, what else do we do? We teach, um, we open our house once a month for people to come here for healing and that's free some sometimes they make you know people make donations but essentially it's free um 
We love to cook good food. That's the other thing that people yes. really don't do these days. The amount of yes. scooters and push bikes that are everywhere now. I know. Like, what, breakfast delivered to your house by someone on a push bike from McDonald's? No. <laughs> no, thanks. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, no. so the art of... Uh, yeah, I've been able to put food together. Is and I and I could never cook. I learned to cook when I had my son because it's like, well, I'm not feeding you crap. I'm going to learn to cook. Um, yeah. So it's, it's another. It's another one of those things, isn't it? That it's kind of got lost somewhere, yeah. and it's 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 quite sad because it really- it's. It's creative, and I yeah. think that's what's missing a lot. Is that creativity? Yeah, I agree. I love to cook. I have always loved to cook. My all of my children say that I'm the best that they've ever eaten food from, and that and that the reason for that is because I put my my alchemical process of love into it because I really truly love to cook. And to yeah. feed people and nurture them. And for the longest time, I didn't know how to cook for anything but an army size amount of people, right? It took me a oh, long wow. time to learn how to cook small <laughs> because I was so used to feeding so many because it wouldn't just be my children. It would be some of my brothers and a sister or two. And an aunt or uncle would pop in and my mother and, you know, because everybody was coming to Kelly's house to eat (laughs) (laughs) because nobody else cooks like that anymore. Uh, Yeah. I would see a lot of people and I, and I love doing it and I grow my own food, you know, I buy local when I can't grow my own, I'm, I'm buying from local. I do a lot of things that are nature based like that, the way that my grandparents did it, my parents did it. And that is a lost art, all of it, the cooking, the way that we get our food, everything about that is like a lost art that is so important to our longevity and our health and, and that union, that camaraderie of sitting with your people and breaking bread with them and having those conversations. I mean, that's, to me, that's what home is. You know, that's what family is, that right there. And yeah, I, I'm, I'm sad that so many people have fallen away from that. It saddens me for them. They just really don't know what they're missing. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> that's so cool. So I think that's great. I think that's great that you're a cook. And I'm okay with you being a witch too by the way, doing your witchy things, because that's, that's another one of those things that people immediately, they go to left field with it and they think this, or they think that, and they always put these labels on it. But at the end of the day, in my personal opinion, all of us beautiful souls that volunteered to be here now to help move this beautiful way forward that we're building in life, we're very likely the same people in history that were all burned at a stake Absolutely. because we embraced our magical qualities. Yeah. yeah. Because we, we are magical beings. Yeah. And we Absolutely. shouldn't be ashamed of it. And people, people shouldn't be trying to put us in categories and put judgment labels on us because we accept and, and hone our God-given abilities that we have. So I have no problem with you you know Ew. being a witch at all <laughs> I, I think it's a great thing I think it's a great thing um some friends of mine and and myself were actually joking the other day that um because we want to build a community in our area where everybody can just come and be free and and you know accentuate each other's gifts and just share in a real community kind of a way right and yeah. um, my friend says well, everybody's everybody's going to say that we've created a coven <laughs> and I'm like, I'm, a, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. If that's Yo. what they want to look at, like, I'm okay with that. You know, I'm, I'm fine with that. Yeah. If they want to come to our coven and visit, they 
Welcome. <laughs> oh, that's cool. I feel like the men. I feel like the men are starting to try to catch up with us women, with being in touch with their intuition and their uh, sacred abilities and things like that. It's a slow process for them, but I feel like it's starting to happen finally. <laughs> I'm quite lucky. Uh, out of all the males that, you know, my dad, my brother, even my son to some degree, who are a little bit uh, mm, toxic. <laughs> um, my partner, no, mm -hmm. he, he's... I don't know. I don't know. I don't even quite know how I manifested him. <laughs> <laughs> I did because yeah. I, I deliberately <laughs> did something that manifested him. Um, but he's, he, he was funny. He was saying today, you know, he's, he's um, very, I mean, he's a medium, very intuitive. And I don't think I've ever met another bloke like him. He's just, he's quite unique. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, um, that's amazing. Maybe, maybe uh, he might want to do a show with us too in the future and we can do some psychic medium kind of stuff and all that. Yeah. <laughs> do some he's, sound. Not, he's not over fond of the camera, but I'm sure I can persuade him. <laughs> <laughs> all right, cool. I, I totally get that because I was scared to death of the camera to begin with. I was yeah, so was I. Completely. <laughs> Hi. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, seriously, I used to sit in front of the camera with my finger just waiting to push play to record, and I just couldn't bring myself to do it. I just couldn't. Wow. I was so scared. But I totally get it. I totally. And look at me now. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I'm live in your face. <laughs> I used to have because uh, we, we uh, were right. <laughs> do um, videos yeah. like um, like walks and stuff that we do or activism stuff that we do and I would have stand up rows with Ian my partner about who was going to be behind the camera because there was no way I was going to be in front of the camera <laughs> we'd have <laughs> arguments about it <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> I love it. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, if he's up to it, that, that might be something fun to do. We could we could yeah. uh, try that out if he's willing. Yeah. But I would definitely like to do um, more shows with you and come up with some fun, creative things to help people see our world and you know normalize it a little more maybe if that's even the word I should be using for it um because we are very down-to-earth people and and that's for me I think that's the thing that people really don't understand when they like they're interested in growing spiritually they're interested in going deeper but everything sounds daunting or confusing or hard to obtain and I just really want to in as many ways possible show them that I mean we're just like anybody else we laugh we cry we sweat we bleed you know we're just like everybody we're, there's nothing um super fantastical about us you know it's like we're untouchable because a lot of people look at things like that too like I could never I've heard people say to me I'm over here and you're up here and I could never achieve that in one lifetime but yes you can because we can literally change our timeline in the blink of an eye I mean Absolutely. all this yeah. is about shifting your perspective yeah, yeah. right yeah so I, I think I'm just looking for ways to help people to shift their perspective, to give themselves permission to open up and entertain a more um, vibrant, meaningful way to be alive and enjoy this beautiful planet that we've been gifted with, 
right? Mm. Yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. And 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 if all yeah, I mean, I I think there's um, I mean, I'm, I don't know what your opinion is on this idea that as we walk this journey now, um, we come more into the cycle of living much 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 longer lives um like uh let me get this right uh some of the uh mesopotamian mesopotamian kings i think it was Mm -hmm. Uh, i know they're a long Mm -hmm. time ago um yes 700 years and beyond it's like Mm -hmm. it's like it's 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 almost like the denser vibration we've taken on the less time we live for so i i'm i'm not planning on going anywhere anytime soon <laughs> that's right and and i completely agree with you i'm not either i think that we can live 700 900 a thousand years the way that Thoth did the way that mm. hermes did the way that moses did and abraham from the bible yes i absolutely think that the, when we raise the vibration of the planet and within ourselves, that this extends our longevity. That's like the ancient Chinese secret, isn't it? Of all of the Zen masters. I mean, it's, that was their yeah. train of thought too, right? Absolutely. And the, all the monks, they live a long, good life, even, yeah. even in this dense vibration that we mm. have yeah. here. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, look at the Look at the Dalai Lama. He's a really old man and he looks fabulous for his age because he <laughs> lives this happy life of the Buddha, right? He's, he has that higher vibration about him. And, mm. you know, and I, I mean, even myself personally, I'm not trying to toot my own horn. I'm just trying to prove a point here. Um, I'm 51 and there's people that will come to me and say, you don't look 50 at all. And it's, I think it's the vibration, right? It's, it's the joy inside of us, you know. Absolutely. Don't Absolutely. you agree? Yeah. Absolutely. And you I can see that so... on people's faces. You can see, yeah, that, you know, all all that emotion <laughs> kind of sets your face in a particular way, <laughs> and then yes, and then your body follows. yes, your body follows. I saw that. That's with right. Mom. That's um, right. You know her her bitterness. Yeah of what had happened in her life you know showed on mm-hmm. her face and then got in her body and yeah That's right. she was on well she was on horrific drugs for pain and stuff and yeah it was you know and then is you know i don't know she was obviously meant to go through that journey um but it's it, it, to be able to, you know, to be able to observe that. <laughs> I don't know it's my mother, but I kind of had a yeah. bit of a, you know, I had a bit of distance there. Um, to actually watch that yeah. happen was uh, mm-hmm. quite a lesson. <laughs> um, absolutely. Absolutely. But I think that's intentional too. I think not only was your mother's own journey intentional for her, and she had the choice of what to do with it. But it was intentional for you to be with her and witness that journey so that you could learn from her choices or lack thereof of how to gauge and move forward because it's a generational thing, right? We're, yeah. we're passing this knowledge on through the generations because I too, I mean, my, I love my mother's pieces. God love her. She's 90 years old. Um, but when I was a child, she was the first, yeah. She was the first narcissist that I ever knew. Wow. Right? Yeah. Um, because my journey was about learning self-acceptance and self-love and self-awareness so that I could better teach it to other people. So that was necessary. All of that was necessary things to happen. And granted, my mother went through plenty of her own um, horrific things in her journey. And, and she taught me faith in that, actually, because she... Um, transmuted energy she would take bad things that happened to her and she would transmute it in a different way to to benefit her right um 
now at the time when I'm a child and looking at it, it looked more strategic and um, selfish, if you will. But I'm seeing, I'm seeing in fact the beauty in the ability to do that if you, if you do it for good, right? If you can do it for good, because we can transmute energy, whether it's for good intention or bad. So yeah. um, huge lessons to be learned through the generations from things like that. So it was meant for you. It was meant for you to observe that. Mm. I, I firmly feel that way. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I've rendered you speechless. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have some tea. <laughs> It's funny because I, I, I guess I've never really made that connection. So, yeah, it, that's quite interesting. <laughs> and oh. only, only yesterday, I love those aha moments when they take you by surprise. It's like, whoa, hang on. <laughs> only yesterday I was going through a load of stuff trying to find something and was looking at photos of my mum. So that's quiet. That, that's that's the that synchro mystic there's a dot there okay <laughs> uh, so that's, that's yeah really quite interesting <laughs> that's how god works through me <laughs> that tends to happen a lot <laughs> i don't know it's coming but it just happens yeah yeah but that's isn't it amazing when it does that... it's amazing when it mm -hmm. happens like that. And I think, you know, through all the things that we yeah. um, help people to restore their being, yeah, one of the things I get most excited about and I jump up and down about is this synchro mystic journey where people go, oh, my God, you never guess. I only said that five seconds ago and then it appeared in front of me. And I'm like, yay. <laughs> it is, I just, there's something about that journey which is, it's pure magic, pure magic when it just appears in front of your face. It is. It is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it really is. That's when we see the divinity in everything, in my opinion. that I love synchronistic stuff. And it seems like that is like a huge theme lately with everyone, um, yeah. even people that didn't really ever notice synchronistic synchronistic things in their life before synchronicity is starting to happen for them and they're getting mind blown and yeah. they're like Kelly oh my god this is this, and this and I'm just like I love the way God works I love the magic that's happening all over the place this is like oh, yeah. so beautiful <laughs> it's, it's like can't you go and they go have you noticed that blah blah and you go what I've been talking about for the last 10 years <laughs> and they go yeah, yeah, that, right? what are you talking about <laughs> I know right yeah where I'm, you I'm glad you listening when I was talking about it <laughs> yeah yeah I think it's just something that we we just can't get we can't wrap, wrap our mind around it until we experience it you know yeah. we can hear other people talk about it but you just don't get it. Kind of like the, a near-death experience, right? You can hear people talk about that, but you just don't really get the full effect of it unless you experience it yourself. Mm. Um, thankfully, with synchronicity, we don't have to almost die to understand, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but, Absolutely. I mean, with that being said, it really is kind of like a phoenix moment, though, because once you start becoming aware of the synchronicities once you start becoming aware of the self it's like this whole death and rebirth thing right you know and it's it's a beautiful it's a beautiful thing to witness in people i i love watching people grow i love it yeah okay so this has been an awesome first show to do together um, do you have anything you would like to 
state of the world before we close this out? Any parting words of wisdom? <clears throat> well, something that we, uh, so it's certainly really come in in the last three years, although we were, all our work was around this kind of idea of um, what some people describe as unconditional love. But I never understood, I never really understood that. It didn't make sense to me. Um, but something that came in, I think it was either last year or the year before, was um, this idea of love consciousness. So it's a consciousness, which is love, which comes, it, it is everything that ever was, is, and will be. And it, it has no remit at all except to align with it so you know and it's it's you know because we're bombarded by lots of stuff all the time yeah it, it can be a challenge to align with that part of ourselves that is the innate inside us yeah or not inside us <laughs> um, but if you can as much as possible align with that part of yourself that just knows just knows so i i knew about a month ago i don't know i don't you know i didn't know how it was going to i don't know how what i was did not know i was going to be sitting here right i knew somewhere along the line there was going to be an interview i didn't know if i was doing the interview or someone else was doing the interview but i knew i was going to be there there was an interview yeah i didn't know how i know that I knew it and it was in, it was kind of in, it was here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, like, well, I don't know what that is, <laughs> but thank you. <laughs> and then it's unfolded. Yeah. But there was a knowing yeah. there. So, you know, people might mm -hmm. say, well, where does that knowing come from? Well, it comes from in here because before you were born, you can see everything and you can see your path. Right. We go right that's the one we off we go um so your soul higher self whatever people want to call it knows it knows it knows where it's going yeah we might not but it knows <laughs> so yeah if you can align with that with that part of yourself and i think that the key to connecting with that is is some kind of meditation so some kind of creativity or sitting in silence silence that that yeah being away of everything is phenomenal and if you can connect with who you truly are well that, that's that's it that's it um and that's that's love consciousness because we are that that's come from the void <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense. That's right. That made perfect sense. That was very beautiful. Oh, yeah, that was really beautiful. I love that. Thank you. And yeah, like you're it, like you were saying, your higher self just kind of gives you a little uh, cue card or a little road sign that up ahead, this is going to happen. <laughs> just yeah. trust that and get ready for it. And ta-da, here we are having an interview Ooh. together. <laughs> uh, yeah. Like magic. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. I love it. That was a great, that was a great analogy for true unconditional love. Really good. Because it, it, it comes from that, it comes from within. It's that acceptance of self, that acceptance of where we come from i mean i love that that's beautiful how you did that really good really Thank good <laughs> yeah it's good. been an absolute pleasure <laughs> speaking with you and you it's, it's amazing and it's it's funny because i think it was a couple of years ago when um, i think someone sent me like check this out you know like people do with youtube i'm like okay the, amongst a whole list of videos I had to check out but your reading the, the, you did a reading um I think it was a couple of years ago and I sat there and listened to it I'm like oh my god this is really spooky 
it was so it was uncanny <laughs> um i get that a lot <laughs> he was like he just yeah. hit the nail right on the head i'm like okay subscribe and here we are cool well thank you i didn't even realize that you're actually a subscriber <laughs> ah yeah <laughs> Well, that's cool. <laughs> Thank you very much. I am very, very grateful for all of my subscribers and I'm very grateful for my gifts and I'm very grateful for my journey because it taught me to trust that, you know, I have this direct connection with God all the time. And for a long time, I didn't want it. I didn't, I didn't, I knew my purpose. I knew my path, but I just wanted to be normal like everybody else. And then I realized that normal isn't good. <laughs> so, you know, I had to accept who I am and, and be okay with being different, you know? Yeah. But I, I'm very grateful for this whole journey. I'm, I'm grateful that I met you through YouTube. Um, yeah, absolutely. Who knew that, I mean, you were going to watch a video two years ago and here we are now that's yeah. amazing i love that <laughs> that's phenomenal to me yeah yeah I, thank Very you god cool. i love how crazy cool this is <laughs> <laughs> i love it uh, i mean it i mean like i live like you i live this life every day it's not just like a job for me it's it's my life yeah. it's my lifestyle but yeah. i still get it's so excited just like a little kid you know I'm like a kid in a candy shop when things like this happen it just thrills yeah. me so much I, I'm yeah. gonna be on cloud nine the rest of the day because of knowing this now <laughs> cool <laughs> yeah oh it's yeah. amazing this, this, love journey, it when God works. <laughs> this journey is phenomenal and I love it it is it is it absolutely is and it's a pleasure and an honor to be on this journey with you. Thank you so much for agreeing to come on my show. Oh, Thank so you. I mean, this has been like, this has been wonderful. Um, <laughs> and I really look forward to doing more stuff with you and maybe yeah. with your partner. We won't pressure him, but <laughs> if he's open, yeah, absolutely. Oh, he's he, he'll talk for absolutely. a long time. <laughs> Well, I uh, like talkers. Yeah. I like talkers. Yeah. Cool. Never a dull I mean, moment, yeah. right? <laughs> okay. Cool. All right. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as we did, or at least half as much as we did. We enjoyed <laughs> it immensely. Um, you know, all that same stuff. If you're not subscribed, please do so. Hit that like button thing because it helps the algorithm and all that and I hate to do that spiel, but it's just part of that technical world. You know, in order to get this message out and, and to get reach as many people as we can, and those are the things that have to happen. So I appreciate right. everyone's help in doing so. I appreciate Angie for being here and sharing her beautiful light with us and her uh, wisdom. And maybe next time the, the singing goes, hopefully, if we can get the microphone stuff worked out that would be yep. really amazing to experience with you cool. so thank you and until next time be well and be blessed in love and light guys <laughs>